My name is Matt Cufflin. I'm the clinical editor for Optometry Today TV, and today I'm going to talk about measuring the pupil reflexes. Initially, we can look at the static characteristics of pupils by measuring the size in bright illumination. We're looking for any size difference between the two eyes, which would indicate anisochoria, or that it is present in around one-fifth of the normal population. This can be measured using a simple millimetre rule, and if any difference in pupil size exists, we would then check that in dim illumination. Physiological anisochoria would show a constant difference in pupil size, whether it was bright illumination or dim illumination. Pathological causes would tend to show a greater magnitude of anisochoria, whether they be in bright illumination or dim illumination. The room lights should be dim enough as to encourage some pupil dilation, but not too dim so that you struggle to see the fellow eye. We ask our patients to look into the distance when measuring the pupils uh, without their spectacle correction in place. Be very careful when measuring the pupil reflexes of hypermetropes that you don't pick an accommodative distance target. This may cause them to accommodate and you'll get the associated pupil meiosis which we want to avoid. So to measure the direct response to light, we will bring a pen torch in from the temporal side, have it about 5 to 10 centimetres away from the eye and shine it into the pupil. To measure the direct response, we will look at the eye which is being illuminated and as soon as that light arrives, you should see an associated pupil constriction. Upon removal of the light, you should see the pupil dilate. This process can be repeated two to three times as abnormalities will possibly show once it has been repeated. When measuring the consensual response, you will be looking at the fellow eye, so the eye which has not had the light placed on it. You should see an associated pupil meiosis when the other eye has light on it, and you should also see a consensual dilation when light is removed from the fellow eye. This direct and consensual response would also be checked for the other eye, so you would then bring the pen torch in from the other side, directing it into the opposite eye. An absence of light reflex would indicate that you will need to check the near pupil response. The near response can be checked very simply by asking your patient to fixate into the distance and then switching fixation to an accommodative target placed at about 15 centimetres away. This should result in a, an associated constriction of the pupils occurring with accommodation. This cycle can be repeated to check for any fatigue. Next, we would look for a relative afferent pupil defect uh, using the swinging flashlight test. When doing the swinging flashlight test, you want the room illumination slightly dimmed again and you want your patient again to be looking in the distance. The pen torch is usually placed in line with the nose so that you'll be stimulating a similar extent to the retina in each eye. The pen torch will be directed towards one of the eyes and held there for two to three seconds. You should get an associated meiosis from both eyes. Following this, you will flick the pen torch very quickly so it is shining in the opposite eye. And again, both pupils should remain constricted. It's left there for another two to three seconds and again returned to the original eye. With the swinging flashlight test, you're always looking at the eye which is being illuminated. A relative afferent pupil defect will mean that when you flick the light to the affected eye, it will not constrict, it will dilate as the consensual response from the other eye overrides the afferent response from the eye that now is being illuminated.